Oh shit, funky portal. Ah! Oh shit, what happened? What the? Where the hell am I? I am the god of population one. I was sent here since I heard a disturbance in the balance of population one. The greatest VR game to ever be released. Oh, uh, you, you sound familiar. Uh, Bill Gates! Guilty as charged. So, when did you become the god of population one, and, and fucking why? Well, you know. Yeah. So why did you bring me here? Why do I need this, some kind of divine intervention? What's this all for? You see, the balance of the universe is maintained by nefarious dick writing, and you just happen to not be dick writing enough. What? L let me put it in a way that you can understand. My great-great-grandfather was God. I feel you. And he created a universal scale. The dick riding scale. You see, there need to be a balance of people. People made to dick ride, and people made to hate. You aren't supposed to hate on population one. It's, it's making the scale unbalanced. So what, I can't have opinions just because a stupid invisible scale tells me I can't? Hey, have some respect. My great-great-grandfather created that scale. May he rest in peace. He's, he's, he's not dead. Alright, yeah, I forgot. God. No, he's just really fucking old. Ah. Anyway. Enough with the small talk. You need to explain why Population 1 is the greatest VR game of all time, not the worst. Otherwise, the universe will be at stake. Now, go do whatever I just told you. I, I gotta play fucking Balloon Sour Defense, okay? Toodles, toodles, toodles. <sighs> hey guys, I'm gonna have to lie for the next few minutes. Could not be a bigger day for people who don't give a shit. It was 2020, the year of the pandemic, and life was hard. We struggled with loneliness from being separated from others like we had never been before. Some of us got sick and went through the toughest days of our lives, and some of us had to watch loved ones go through that pain as well. It was a bad year for me as well. I became lonely. I transferred to a new school, which, seeing how it was completely online that year, eliminated any option of me making any friends there for the time being, leaving me to only have those I knew online, which might have been for the better in the long run, to be honest. It was hard. And then Big Box came along to make it even harder. October 22nd, the mark of the beast. There's three defining days in my life. The day my last cat died, the day my grandma died, and the day my would live died. Population 1 got a release date trailer about a month prior on September 16th, and I mean on paper, this trailer looked pretty fucking cool. Hell, I'll go as far as to say it looked flat out amazing. There were so many features and gimmicks in this trailer alone, this thing looked stacked. Not to mention, it was published by none other than Oculus themselves, meaning it was given grace by, at the time, Oculus themselves. Population 1 was shown as a battle royale with features to make it one of the most dynamic VR games ever. The fights shown looked so dynamically interesting. You could smash through a window and glide to a battle, hurtle over pipes and small objects, climb and use the top of stairs as natural cover as you peek and shoot. There was even one scene where like four squads were all gliding in the air to shoot each other. This was incredible, it looked so much fun, and if I'm being honest, it was genuinely one of the reasons I wanted a headset in the first place. Something I've wanted in VR shooters help, shooters in general, are dynamic fights. Just regular shootouts have gotten boring. This is one reason I've been drawn towards other games recently, like Battlefield, because of how dynamic and cinematic everything looked. And while this game obviously looked limited being ran natively on Quest hardware and all, it still looked more than promising. It took me until about 2021 to actually get Population 1, and I was anticipating it so much before I was able to get it. I'd heard nothing but praises from this game, and my opinion on it hadn't swayed it whatsoever from before, it still looked amazing. So I spent $30 and Population 1 was mine. I ended up refunding it about two hours later. What happened? Alright, there's no way I'm gonna be able to dick ride this thing for much longer. I, I need to start preparing. After scrounging, I've came up with three alternatives. DS mic, web shooter, gun. Uh, which one, which one, uh, uh nah, yeah, this two. So, what is the deal with this game? I mean, everything on paper sounds great, so declaring blasphemy for this thing existing. Well, we have to start at the start. The tutorial. I only ever trust VR shooters with tutorials anyway, so this was a good start. This tutorial teaches you all you need to know with the game. It teaches you about climbing, building, and a pretty cool feature actually, the healing system. When you get hurt, you'll use healing items. It's a common staple of battle royales and military soldiers used for drug testing by the government. It's awesome. In most VR games, it would be simple. Either bring a thing of food or whatever to your mouth, or heroin, and while fine, neither of them were truly 
immersive, per se. I mean, for Christ's sake, I just ate that candy with the wrapper still on. I was STARVING! Population 1 knew this, however. They know a lot. Way more than they should. I put my fingers up, asked how many fingers I'm holding up, they said four. How'd they know that? Introducing the banana. Banana fans, keep it cool. Instead of becoming a psychopath and swallowing the banana and the peel whole, you've gained the power of taste buds and suddenly realize maybe the peel was overrated. So, the future is now. You can peel it, and then, and only then, can you eat it. Nice. All the other healing items follow the same sort of format. If there's a can, pop the top. It works really nice and adds to the immersion. There's even another healing item which you can shake up for a few seconds before you can use it, which means, yep, there's most definitely lead in that. So I was looking at this web shooter and I had a revelation. What if I put a bullet into it? Oh, damn it! Ah, ah, shit. Why back here? Why am I back here? Hey, just checking in on the dick writing process. How's it going? Shouldn't you be able to tell? Right, silly me. Let me just take a look at the scale. Yup. Balance is definitely fucking balancing. Alright, well anyways, can I, uh, go back now? Yeah, sorry. I forgot earlier, but I need you to sign a contract. Uh, what? what uh, contract? Why do I need to sign a contract? Just sign the contract. Make my job a little easier, okay? And if I don't? I kill you. Yeah, no, that, that, uh, that, uh, that checks out, that checks out. Actually, uh, yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, so what, what even is on the contract? What, what am I signing? Oh, we ran out of ink, so it's kind of empty right now. Up for interpretation. Oh, okay, that's cool. Anyway, get the hell out of here. I love Tuesdays. No shooter is complete without- uh, I just- I just can't put my finger on it. Oh yeah, GUNS! And luckily, the guns here are- Uh, what? Oh, hold on, hold on. Can we- can we get a- can we get a replay of that? The cardinal sin of VR shooters. Being a pussy. So, apparently Big Box thinks we're all fucking stupid, because apparently we're too stupid to figure out how to manually reload, so instead, they have to hold our hand throughout the entire reloading process. There's no option to completely manually reload at either, that's just how it is! To reload, the mag just floats below or beside where the mag insert is, and to put it in, you just slide it in. So there is no immersion, there is no grabbing for a mag in your pocket, pulling out and putting it in, it's nearly entirely automated. The only manual part about this whole thing is you do cock back the little Whatever, you know what I'm talking about. I don't really, I'm not a gun guy, I don't know what this is, but like, why, why, why do I do this? Why do this? I mean, they didn't even go all the way. Either automate reloading completely, or don't automate it at all. Don't stick to this weird middle stage where you think we're dumb, but not completely dumb. Nobody's happy this way. New players think it's stupid because it won't give them the immersion they want, and older players will be annoyed because it's just, it's just stupid, it's dumb. Nobody wins here. The guns themselves, I mean, they're fine, they're whatever they shoot, the sound effects sound pretty decent, I guess, but I wouldn't necessarily say it feels satisfying to shoot people. But hey, hey, all of this is just a tutorial, we haven't really gotten into the game itself, so why just not give it a shot, alright? So we make it to the menu and we're solos. There's just squads. There's no duos either? Let me, let me correct myself. Uh, solos is a thing as a limited time mode. Yep, the only core mode of this game is squads. No solos, no duos, no trios. All of those stay as limited time modes. Why? I don't understand. Huh? What? So, uh -huh. yeah. <clears throat> uh, so, turns out we do have trios, except trios is squads. Squads is three people. It's called squads, but it only has three people. Why? Alright, whatever. At the end of the day, this can all be chalked up to uh, a stupid nitpick. When we get into the actual game, where... Where's everybody? There's only like, what, 20 players in here? Where are the others? Is this game really that dead? I mean, hell, it went free to play recently. How, how could it be dead? Well, guess what? Uh, number one, <laughs> it is dead. And number two, uh, this is no mistake. Population one is in, and listen closely, 18 player battle royale. 18. There are 18 people in this battle royale. 100 is what it should be. 75? Sure, we can work with that. 50? I mean, if it's a smaller map with a smaller player base, why not? But not even half of that? Was 21 too much? Where, where's the limit here? Be because I, I really don't think it was because of hardware limitations. The game runs fine and looks like shit still anyways. So why not pump some resources into either bumping up the player limit or making the map look nice? Speaking of map, what is this even supposed to be? I want to compare something. This map and Fortnite's map. I'll even compare it to the worst Fortnite map, Chapter 2's map. 
Fortnite's locations became iconic as they took ordinary places and gave them a unique twist with memorable names and set pieces. Sweaty Sands, it was a row of buildings, houses, and a huge hotel right beside a beach. A little generic, but it's still pretty cool and it has a lot of iconic set pieces. What does Population 1 have? Planes. Out of all the Population 1 locations, only about half of them actually have decent amount of buildings or interesting things going for them. It feels so empty, so much less thought out. In Fortnite, even the worst POIs had thought out set pieces that made for good ground to fight in. Everywhere you turn, there were just things, there were just things, structures or or little buildings or whatnot to occupy the space it was in. Population 1 just, just feels so empty in comparison, it feels lackluster. And, and it's not even like the places that exist are detailed. Buildings will be completely unfurnished on the inside, and it's just, it's bad. Alright, how about instead of comparing the worst, we compare the best then. The most iconic locations from both games. In the red corner, Tilted Towers. Tons of buildings with unique and iconic interiors, a lot of area for competition and places to gain high ground, as well as lots of natural cover. It's everything a location in an FPS should be and more. What does Population 1 have? The tower. The tower. The tower. The tower. There's only one. A single, large tower. It's visually nothing. <laughs> It's a tall black tower, and there's nothing beautiful or, or stunning about it except for its size. It's not a town, there's not any buildings really, and when they are, they're very small, unfurnished houses outside of the tower itself. Is it good looking? Not really. Does it have tons of detail in every direction? God no! Does it have things like, like, does it have small miscellaneous areas or anything to make the location stand out besides the tower itself? No! There was so little effort put into making this thing seem like an actual place. It doesn't make sense! You've got all these other places and natural landmarks. Plains, little towns and whatnot. Why the hell is there suddenly a huge tower in the middle of the map? Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that everything should make sense and have lore significance or whatever you want to call it, because I think that's stupid. What I'm saying is that you can't have a consistent theme throughout the map only to throw it away when it comes to the big advertised location. And I know an argument you might have to say with all this is, oh well, Fortnite is owned by a multi-billion dollar company, and they have the resources to make all this huge stuff. Population 1 is just a VR game. To that I say, Population 1 was published by Oculus themselves. I imagine they supplied a lot of the funding when it came to this game. By all means, this is essentially an Oculus game. Oculus is owned by Meta, and is now Meta, but you get the idea. Meta, I don't know if you know this, owns Facebook, the most popular social media app of all time. They are beyond, they are so beyond Epic Games in terms of value. There is no reason Oculus couldn't have funded just a little bit more to Big Box to give it things like a better map, a bigger map, a higher player cap, better gun handling and shooting, and, and everything, really. Oh, and before we move away from the Fortnite comparisons, Building. Just like reloading, instead of going all in or not doing anything at all, they decide to awkwardly copy building and go in the middle ground. They copied it to the point where you can still tell it's a Fortnite ripoff version, but they only included walls. There are only walls. No stairs, no floors, no cones. Oh yeah, and no editing either. That's a problem on its own, but you want to know what else is a problem on its own? If you don't know, Fortnite's map is on a grid based around where placeable builds can be. So if you decide to build a floor in a house, you'll fit snugly inside instead of awkwardly being off-centered and clipping inside. Population 1 just does not have one. Whatsoever. Why? Why? Just why? If you're going to make building a feature, why do all of this just to half-ass so much more stuff with it? We already know you're copying Fortnite. If you're going to do it, at least go all the way. And don't even get me started with- Oh, fuck. That's it. Your time is up. I'm done hearing about your stupid complaints, and I'll kill you myself just to shut you up. What? Who the hell are you anyways? You wouldn't remember. Of course you wouldn't. Once you mess with my timeline... Oh, hold on, I, I mess with the what? You wouldn't remember, would you? You're so incompetent. There was a timeline that was destroyed because of your actions. You were in a predicament, you used your power for evil, tried converting the world to proto Tina's pizzaism. The worst kind of frozen pizza there is. Eventually, your past came back to haunt you, and the water bottle you drank years before came back and altered the people's perception of Totini's pizza. You were the public enemy number one. This is where your story was supposed to end, Zack. You were going to be in the middle of a riot, killed by a mob, but no! You just had to take your actions into your own hands. You killed the water, and just how your story began, you ended it the same way by drinking it through the fucking mask. Soon afterwards you woke up, you don't remember that? I... I think? I guess it makes sense that you didn't. This is where the timeline was altered. When you woke up, you entered timeline 2. My timeline. You left your own. And when you came to this one, things were different. Memories were altered, you remembered the second you arrived. Although as the months passed, your memories 
past you. And you forgot about everything that happened. Your memories became their own. Memories from the timeline to Zack. The original Zack vanished. You vanished. And now the people there are looking for a man that doesn't exist anymore. Uh, how do you know this? How, how do I know this is real? Because I came from that timeline. Let me know if this rings a bell. Do you remember this man? He was a news reporter and you two fought over and over. He died soon after your encounter. And I was behind it all. I got him fired. I drove him insane. And it just so happened that the man who appeared on his TV was you. I fired him. I took a gamble. I foresaw your actions and I fired him at the right time so when he got home that day, he saw you on the TV. And the blame was suddenly shifted towards you. I was his boss. I'm giving you two options here. If you stay here, Timeline 1 will have no Zack. In fact, the timelines will stay split. However, staying here would grant most safety towards you. You wouldn't be wanted, but you'd be safe. Or, you can kill me. The timelines merge into the true timeline. You will once be public enemy number one, however the timelines will be no longer at risk of collapse. It will fix everything. Although I'm sure we both know which option you'd pick. Your ego, selfishness. I have a fun game. Uh, it's called 20 Second Head Start. Run. Wait, 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 let me get you some. Back up, back up, back up. You actually. Oh, daddy, daddy, run! Oh, well. Let me give you an arm there, buddy. Here you go. You can have it back. No! Mario. No! <laughs> I'm getting old, am I right? <laughs> What's the cure this time? An asterisk! It's wrong! Diamond, you have not done a single thing right! Ooh.